You are good to go. Okay. Let's call this meeting to order. Um, so not an intentions as well, Pratt. Are there any adjustments to the agenda? I just might want to say something on camera about the uh, brown tail moth um, okay. seminar. Yeah. Let's put that down um, before the property updates. Okay. That, okay. Um, so like 5-1-A. Okay. Put it there. When we get to the property update, a couple of comments about Elm Street. Okay. Just kind of an update. Okay, so did everyone read over the minutes from September? I thought that all looked fine. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I make a motion that we accept the minutes from the last meeting. Second. Second. Yeah. All in favor? Okay, all approved. Okay, so um, then there's no public. Old business. So the select board approved the name, the Madamaker Rest Area. It's actually a relief because so many people have recognized that that it's been on Google Maps as that mm -hmm. that it would have been not you know it would have been a time you know some, some time to to get that changed on Google so I'm like oh, we'll keep one the same there so done that's done one typo <laughs> well, there it is <laughs> so far the other ones later oh there's a K missing yeah <laughs> um, the pocket park signs um, so we'll isn't here tonight to provide the feedback. I was watching the meeting, the select board meeting when they were talking about this. I did notice that Jan, Jan Minzy said she likes the signs we have, the blue signs we have. And John Daigle um, said to Will that that's the one he, because um, the wing tip of the plow, those ones move. Mm -hmm. So they're better on the post with that. Um, the blue sign. The blue sign. The one down, doesn't it have a... The, well, okay. the uh, signs on Quarry Hill, Dutch Neck Marine Park. I thought the Dutch Neck Marine one was on a chain. It's on a chain on the post. Are they blue? I don't know. They're blue. Yeah, they're okay. blue. Okay. They're like a dark blue or okay. maybe blue. Yeah. I just had to think for a minute because I, I just thought of the wood post. Yeah, it has the, the wood yeah, the sign post itself it's was, yeah. blue and it's white lettering. Yeah. I have one comment on that that I'll probably have to pick up with John. But, um, in terms of... Uh, Signs for, for instance, the the Monomic River Rest Area and Elm Street. Um, the locations that I would be thinking of would be far away from, you know, not right there by the entrance, but set back quite a ways. For instance, Elm Street. If you've been there, so that you know that there's a property line between a. a, a the adjacent property owner on Jefferson, and there's some shrubs up near Jefferson, right on the property line. And my idea would be to set the sign way back against those, yeah. so it would be completely out of the way. Similar placement over at um, the yeah. rest area, you know, on that, that little kind of single picnic table peninsula between the two driveways, yeah. kind of inset in there. Yeah. Rather than up by the driveway where the plow would be. Yeah. I um I think visibility is gonna be an issue too, and I think what we need to do is maybe have a site visit. Yeah. And um a site visit to those two because those two would be the ones that have names to start with. I'm a little bit divided because I really like the signs we have now, and I also like the idea of having continuity. I love the idea that when you go through Wilderboro and you see that sign. You know, it's the Wilderboro Conservation Commission sign. You know, like when you go around and you see the history plaques, I know that's the Wilderboro Historical Society doing that. Right. Mm -hmm. So if we're going to change them or do something different at the pocket parks, do we do something different at the other parks? Or can we just, I, you know, and the, the, their, the blue signs, you can read them. And I love the icons, you know, immediately what you can do there. Yep. And yeah. it, they fit the, the quest from John Daigle. Yeah, I'll have, to, I'll have to look at those a little bit more closely. Yeah. But my, my concern is how visible they are from a distance, mm -hmm. uh, especially at the pocket parks, to drivers who are traveling 35, 40, 45 miles an hour. Yeah. I mean, That's where I think you might need to put them kind of on the corner of the yeah. streets, the corner of Elm Street and Jefferson Street, as opposed to in the bushes, well, or next to the bushes on the property. Again, if it's 
but the problem it's becomes of, it's plowing. Not a, it's not an mm -hmm. either or thing. But Daigle so, said if it was just a single post, he could plow around it. With the right. with something if that has a chain. The corner. But if the sign, I don't know how large or bright the sign would be on those posts, but what I'm thinking of is a larger sign set back further, something that would be more visible, more colorful. My, my, yeah, my I think other the bushes would be in the way, right? No, yeah. From are one direction, this, not from the other direction. Well, this is why we need a site visit. I think a site visit. I think we should table this issue of the signs for a site visit that we can all look and agree, and we can then we can stand or hold something up and look at it and be more, you know, mm -hmm. comfortable with, with our choices. 100%. Okay. okay. Yeah. Table the sign positions and style for a site visit. Okay, so we'll table that for now. Then we'll set the site visit for this month because I really want to get this settled. Then. Okay. So, just, are just you going to change what you've been doing? Is that the intent? I'm not sorry, I came in late. Um, just to reiterate what I've tried to express before, I'm not married to this idea, but I think it's being misunderstood, and I just want to make sure that yeah. people understand what my my thinking is right but well, we have two yeah there's two different visions because you want something that is like is a box with the words on the front and then flow something where flowers can go right well like a no a box yeah. that would hold a sign mm -hmm. yeah sign mm -hmm. flower box in front of sign I mean, draw your attention right standard sign you know a, a board with two posts and then a flower box placed in front of that planter box um so that's that's part of the concept, but the location, the size of the sign and the location, are, and the flowers, which add color, are kind of what sells it. You know what makes it visible. What people, somebody driving by at forty miles an hour is going to go like this. Could we use the style sign we are you're currently using, enlarge it, and put it on a flower box? So the location will make a big difference of whether we use this box on the bottom or not. The other part of it is these pocket parks are small. Mm -hmm. And my personal concern is I don't want to take away from the view. I think something I think it will take away from the view. Um, Again, location. Yeah. I think dressing them up with flowers is a nice idea, but I don't think you need to. I think the whole point is to see a picnic table, to see waterfalls, and go, ooh. Mm -hmm. And part of making sure that people from out of from out of town or people coming and they don't want to miss them is making sure that the geotags are correct in Google Maps and making sure, which I've been going around working on that with all of our properties. So that's, that's another challenge of ours because right. most people when you're looking for something, I know I do it, I put it on my Google Maps and I wait till it says you've arrived at the destination. Yeah. Okay, well, again, a site visit, we can discuss this yeah. in much more. So we'll set a date detail. for a site visit. Mm -hmm. Okay. That'll be fun to watch everybody holding up things. I know. <laughs> Come take pictures fun. of us. See how far so, my, well so my only fear with the flower boxes is if Steve gets run over by a bus, who's going to water them? <laughs> <laughs> we have not re resolved that. Luckily, there aren't a lot of buses. Yeah. That's what Twice Max day. keeps Twice saying to me. <laughs> okay. It could be a school bus. Um, well, Careful those. <laughs> Old business on the town forest was um, we were still working on getting pricing, or Max is still working on getting pricing from an arborist. Um, have are they going to? Is that same arborist going to come for a walkthrough? Or where are we at with that? Uh, I haven't had a chance to get them to okay. Down, so okay, I'm, I'm still trying to get them down here. I think we've got time because I don't think we can do the treatment till spring. Is my understanding from the main state forest? When service. did the beetles come? <laughs> We're, I, I'm, I'm oh, sorry. Agenda, thank you. Yes, I, me. I'm well, bad. Following the agenda. I, don't know how I was so have... excited about the Beatles. I'm I don't so... know how you do things for I want to hold your hand. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I meant. <laughs> okay. Um, and then, so the insectary update is it's really good news. I'm so excited. Is the governor's office approved us for an insectary location? Um, and not only that, I just want to make sure I get this right, they are going to give us um, 
2,000 beetles. Do I have that right? Yeah, 2,000 beetles. They're going to give us 2,000 beetles. So typically, it costs two thousand dollars to get a minimum of a thousand beetles. So they're giving us two thousand. You know, so it's four thousand dollars worth of beetles plus the insectary. So I'm just. Can we name them? I can't stop smiling. <laughs> <about it. laughs> well, they're going to only be four different names. I just, I just We're going to name them after the beetles. Um. So the other part with the insectary is um, some birch trees are going to need to be cut down um, to make space around the, the young hemlocks that they want to put them in. So that's something that um, I guess we'll need to vote on to approve that, right? Is there a time timeline on when they're? Um, the, it doesn't need to be ready for the first shipment of beetles, which the first shipment is coming. So for our first 500 beetles are coming sometime next week. Um, Will gave the physical address of the town. They come, I guess, in a box. They're mm -hmm. going to arrive here. They do. Um, Colleen has my contact info because she says it's kind of one, one of those things where you're just going to get a call and be like, meet me there now. Um, and I've got the approval from my work. They know I'm like, over the next month, I just, oh, I got to stop and run for beetles. Oh, <laughs> I'm very excited. That's excellent. Yeah. So um, sometime next week, and I'll email you guys. I'll, I'm going to try to take pictures because I'm going to go with her for the release and very excited but um no the insect tree doesn't have to be ready for that but the sooner we get the trees down the better i you know i think it's been so hard to get communicate or not hard it's been difficult because she's really busy so when they finally have an opening to work on the insectary i just want to be ready to go so we're all going to be this fall i would hope for this wow, i would hope for this fall the beetles yes for the fall okay excellent. um but the insectary not how, how large would these first trees I mean, is chainsaw large or chainsaw large? The like, um, we'd have to get public works to help we us. We actually, that. I will say, we will give you public works. We have an actual tree guy now who works in public works. Okay. Ooh. Oh, dandy. So Greg, is that is something that, um, mm -hmm. you? Greg, is that... I believe so. Okay. Is that something, Julie? You talked to John about getting them. I will done. talk to John or his assistant. Okay. Okay. And do we need to vote to approve the cutting of the trees? We or could do that. Sure. Just so we have that. I make a motion that we uh, accept the cutting of the birch trees in the town forest to allow for the beetles to do their job. All those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Um, <laughs> so I'm going to ask, I'll tell them to do it. Will somebody mark them? Yeah, how many trees are there? Yes, I can get that update from Will. He was up there walking out with Colleen. Okay. So I, I'll get the... Okay. Will, how many trees? Will will mark trees. Yeah. Will will. <laughs> well, they're always my favorite things to write in the bit when will will do something. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. And the next. So we're good there. The next um old business is the Elm Street Pocket Park discussion of names. For so from previous meetings, the names suggested were Alewife Outlook or Alewife Lookout. Oh. Um. Just a technical point, if I might. Um, I think it's singular is alewife and plural is alewives. Okay. So, um, okay. Alewives outlook or alewives lookout. Alewives or alewives. Okay, so and, uh, another another grammatical error. <laughs> no, sorry. Right. I've, I've heard people say alewife meaning plural, but yeah, you're right, um, Steve. Thank you. And one other point. Um, that's that spot has never really had a name before. Right. Right. So if we suddenly start publishing like Alewives Lookout, who's going to know where it is? So I think we should probably try to include Elm Street in there, because otherwise, you know, you're going to have a lot of people going, "What? That's nice. Where is it? Oh, it's that little pocket park over on Elm Street." Oh. Yeah, so that's what this portion is. What are our top name suggestions? Because yeah. we agree, I, you guys agreed at last meeting that we should do another survey. Absolutely. Um, and it's the same like giving directions to the other parks. We can have directions, same with making sure it gets geotagged. Actually, I don't have Wi Fi there, which has been a challenge. I went down to try to start building some mapping location for it the other day, and I, I don't know why. Um, so, what do you. I don't think do you, Elm has to be in the. I don't think the street location has to be in the name. Well, because, locals. I mean, Madomic River rest area, yeah. well, it's on the river, sure, but people just know rest area, and that clicks. If we start something new here, 
then we, we give the directions with it. It it's becomes, mm -hmm. if we get all life outlook to be identified on a Google map, yeah. it'll be on a Google map. So you don't have mm -hmm. to say corner of Jefferson and Elm. And I think our little brochure thing that we created, okay. the yeah. little flyer. I, I think we should throw it out there as one of the- Sure, so how do you want to- yeah. I mean, you know, we, formally the, um, the landing is known as the Pine Street Public Landing. And then there's the Dutch Neck Marine Park. So that there is a precedent for including. But the, the Pine Street Landing, I had a number of people meet at the Narrows go, Pine Street Landing, what are you talking about? Oh, the town landing. Yeah. yeah. And so it's known as the town landing. Right. Pine Street really isn't part of the name that the locals use. Yeah. I mean, that is correct. That's. I had a time so, getting Google to change that. It took about six months, too, because it just says town landing or something on the Google map. And to get it to Pine Street, I, uh, whoever's I'm bugging somebody. <laughs> yeah, and it's, but it's one of two town land or two landings that are public landings. So. Right. But how would you work Elm Street into the name? What What are your names? I'd be like Elm Street Alewives Lookout. Or you so just say Elm Street Lookout. Well, I think I like the Alewives part. I mean, it, you know, that kind of makes it distinctive. But then it gets so long. Yeah. Well, okay. Madame River Rest Area, Elm Street Fish Ladder. Oh, that's fine. Because isn't that what we're... Yep. I don't know yep. that. There's like Elm Street Fish Ladder, yeah. Okay. I think that's excellent because if we were ever to make a trail, that's what Dammer Scott and Mills Fish Ladder is. Yeah. Oh, that's a good point. Okay. And if we ever get that bridge from Was that, Elm Street... Who, who to... just came up with that? Max. Yeah. That's why you're... That's, that's, that's why, why you're, you're my that. replacement. <laughs> <laughs> If we ever get the uh, the um, bridge over to the rest area from Elm Street, mm. you'll be able to. Could you even Street. imagine how amazing that would be? Oh, that is really cool. so perfect. So cool. And I keep looking at the VFW hall behind the VFW hall, the the stone abr abutment that's it's built there. there already. It could go across, right yeah. across where the Alwives yeah. ladder yeah. is. Yeah. But let's work on the Elm Street one first. Yeah. <laughs> we'll name it first. Okay. We'll build the bridge. So we'll do the Elm Street Lookout, Elm Street Alewives Lookout, Elm Street Fish Ladder, Alewives Outlook, Alewives Lookout as our survey options. Okay. Yeah? That's good. Okay. That park being done culminated in Ted Wooster's biggest thing in the four years I was here that he would call me about huh. and talk about that pocket park. Edward uh, Fisher visioned that pocket park yes. as well. And I think Edward gave that idea to Ted. Did he? It was Edward who came up with the whole vision of pocket parks in the area during that visioning session in 2010. He well, he saying, would call me. He would call me up and say, mm -hmm. are you working on that? <laughs> yep. All the time. I saw yes. you. Nice and thing. neither one of them lived to see yeah. it happen, but they're looking at us now. <laughs> I saw your comment that Edward, it was one of Edward's visions. And I'm like, it's always nice to honor Mm -hmm. the people who came before us isn't um, it it, yeah. it is it's yeah. true you have to remember them yeah. i just had a box of old photos um dropped off by uh bill maxwell from the historical society because we're doing a wallpaper out in the hallway yeah. with a bunch of old photos on them cool. and um just looking back you, you know you don't realize like i was like who is this he goes well that was one of the former town managers but don't ask me his name you know <laughs> we don't know which one it was so you never know but you're, it is nice to remember people. yeah it is Okay, new business. Um, cleanup date. So um, the Dutch Neck Marine one, it didn't end up working out. I canceled it because the weather said it was going to be horrendous. And then it was... But then it was actually, it had that opening like right at the time. And I'm like, everyone's going to be shunning me right now. But then it was pouring yeah. other times. So yeah. um, it would have been damp and wet and muddy. And I went and cleaned, I went and cleaned it the other day. I just I was like, I want to give it the attention we said we would. So um, Will and his daughter and I all went down and did a, did walk the trails. And did the it really needs to be raked and um, a yeah. lot of little branches and things cut. I don't know how much you did. We did mostly a litter pickup, and we walked the trails just to see where they're right. at. And and it's nice to be it was there. easily um, noticeable. Here. The trail markers are good. It was a little confusing um, when you get to the big rock, and then there's two trails or two right, markings. Right, because one goes this way and one goes that way. Yeah, it was a little bit confusing right there, because I started going one way. I was like, where are you going? <laughs> but um, other than that, it was pretty clear. Yeah, I don't know how to mark to say um, short, because one is a shortened version of the trail. So if you didn't yeah. want to go in a more strenuous hike. Yeah. You could get off the trail easily that point. 
um I think um I think getting a, a key, of, getting a kiosk down there like the town forest yeah, has to tell them that there's there's a trail that makes it a short hike or there's the longer <coughs> hike yeah and again we want to call it the Fisher Trail yeah the Fisher Trail the longer one right yeah um question on, on that when, when you were down there um a couple of weeks ago Justin and I had these occasional meetings um when I'm filling up the water buckets at the tap up here he'll drive up and say how's it going and he mentioned a couple of weeks ago that he was going to go down to Dutch Neck and do a little cleanup and I mentioned to him that there was a tree down near the one it was cut. It was so it must have been him that did it. Yeah, it was cut in a pile. So that, All thank done. Justin for that. Okay. Um, I will. Excellent. Um, so then it, it made me think while we were down there um, that, you know, the shellfish committee does the spring summer cleanups and should we hold a fall right before winter cleanup and try to get the community together? I, I we could try. I think it would, I, I think where that would be most important is you know, because the people like you and Carol and I with the Garden Club, when we're over there, it's a regular thing to go walk around and pick up the trash that's like around the picnic tables that's yeah. easily visible. But we never do a thorough walk along the, the actual water's edge. Yeah. And a lot of stuff ends up getting blown in there. And if it doesn't get picked up, yeah, it ends up in the water, yeah. you know, uh, which is not good for anybody. Right. Um, so yeah, maybe maybe one after things, you know, we've had a couple of frosts and things have died down, so that you, because a lot of trash will reveal itself that's in the, yeah, the, yeah, weeds, the weeds between yeah. the yeah. mode area and the riverbank. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and it would be good to get that out of there before winter. Yeah. Yeah. You know. Um, but then again, in the spring, yeah, because stuff still builds up. Yeah, and we can. I, I think it's important. Will and I went to the shelf. Well, we all took a date to the shellfish committee, so um, we can do that again, and we can focus in on the parks, or we can encourage focus. You know, we can mention that to them for the committee dates. But for what? So what they do is you tell them where the, where you're going in town, and they write it on the board, and they can mention right. if there's a place of, of an area. So we could do that on ours to people who show up. We could say it would be great if you'd spend some time focusing on this. Um, they meet at the, t the the Pine Street landing for theirs. And so I was thinking maybe we could set up our table and meet spot at the Madomic River Rest area mm -hmm. um, and do it that, that way. That's the place that's that nice probably needs place it the too. most. Yeah, it's a nice yeah. spot that's... and people might pull in and ask what you're doing right. and yeah. just to differentiate the two a little bit. But um, it'll be easy I, for people to find it. Yeah. To locate I, I it. Right. Actually a question about that because, you know, I, I've participated in a couple of those cleanups and I'm, one of these one of these springs we're going to pull a dead body out of that river there i'm sure Ooh, <laughs> you know, I, had, I, pulled out, I pulled out a huge car mat yeah and all there was kinds a car mat there the other day all kinds of just big crap down there Heather pulled a tire but, out of the madonna river once yeah. on a kayak trip mm. oh, wow. but there's there's always a lot of just you know plastic dunking cups and bags and, Bud Light cans and whatever, um, but some of that stuff ends up probably in the weeds across the river from the rest area, and I don't know that that's ever been done, been looked at. Was that private property? Yeah, the, the mobile park, um, they generally take care of that because they all have little gardens around their um, little mobile homes and things. No, I'm not talking about no, he's talking homes. about other talking side. About the Elm, yeah, side, side. the Elm Street side. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, oh, yeah that is the river. Um, that is private property, isn't it? I think so. Wait, where, where your right bridge is going to go. The bridge above. Yes, that is private. Yeah. Okay. Well, um, that's, that's the kind of on that idea. Yeah, I table that. <laughs> so if we did it on a, if we did the cleanup on a Saturday, the transfer station would be open, and Will and I both have trucks, so we could, in lieu of trucks. asking John to bring the big dump truck down, we could, we could be making some runs to the, yeah. I think we could do that. Um, so November, October, October 30th or November 6th would be some good days before it gets too cold. <laughs> what do you think? Does either of those, it's a, sat it's a Saturday, both, yeah. both of them. I'm, I'm gonna be traveling. I'm not gonna say when or anything on camera, but I'm, I'm gonna be traveling. So. Okay. Either of those dates. Either for you, yeah. Steve? Yeah, either for me. Okay, so I'll ask William too, and then um, 
an email for the official date? Do we need to do we need to vote that we're gonna Those are both Saturdays. Those are both Saturdays, yeah. So the transfer station is open. Okay, so I'll just confirm date with Will. Um and then And I can show up in our truck too. Okay, yeah, so we've got three, three trucks. trucks. And then Four trucks. Look at that. We're good. Um, and we'll need, out of our budget, we'll need to get garbage bags and gloves to provide to people. Well, I got, I, because we go through a lot of mulch and compost and bagged goods with the, the um, uh, I've got, I've got all sorts of empty plastic bags that can be used for that without having to buy new plastic bags. Okay. Well, we can bring them down and we'll go through yeah, those first sure. and prioritize those first. This also um, makes me think of a thought. So um, bottles, because they'll be cleaning up bottles. I was wondering, why don't we have a clink for the Conservation Commission? And we can we have a clink for the Conservation Commission? To raise to no behind? reason why we couldn't. I don't know quite how to set that up. I think you just do it right on their website. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I always take mine to the transfer station for the, that's the, Food pantry. Yeah. I'd give my bottles to the Conservation Commission. I'd give mine. There's some go-getters on that team. <laughs> okay. So um, that probably we should vote on to have a clink account. I can get that set up. I make a motion that we set up a clink account for the I Conservation I Commission. I second that. that. All in favor? We're getting some money. And then people who use Clink can donate to you. Yep. Yeah, we can. I can get them bags with the stickers, right? Mm -hmm. So we can announce that on our Facebook page once we get that set up. Some money coming in. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, okay, so we talked about a clean update. I think that's good, and it can encompass. We can encourage them to go to some of our parks and trails to clean up as well. Um, all right, property updates. Brown tail law. Oh, I'm... Oh. Yeah, oh, yeah, Browntown Mall. Sorry, 5A. We had an adjustment to the agenda. Short okay. little comment. I did go to a little seminar for Browntail Moss. It was an um, entomologist from the state. I guess there's three entomologists. They tend to um, specialize in certain sort of um, insects, and he uh, specialized in the Browntail Moss. He did speak a little about the woolly delgid and some of the other insects, um, the emerald ash borer mm -hmm. and things, and basically has a flyer that... Um, a lot of them, uh, the Bremen Library has a whole series of these brochures available, and uh, we can I can download them too, so we could make them available here. I belong to a committee now, <laughs> the Brown Tail Moth Committee for the town, and uh, Nancy Dale and I attended this seminar, and there wasn't any real new information except that there's one new technique that they're using to kill the nests, kill the moths in the nest, um, but it all depends on the timeline. And um, the way is to spray them, and the spray has a dye in it, a color in it, so they can be clear that they're hitting the nest and not the whole rest of the tree, so they can be precise about their use of it. And it's not non-toxic. It's uh, I don't know exactly what the spray is, but it's mostly water. It's mostly like a fireman hose. They're just trying to bash it into little pieces and break it all up. And as long as they get it in the right life cycle portion where they need that nest to go back to to survive, that will get rid of them. But they get it if they get it when they've left the nest and they don't have to go back to it, then it's not going to do any good. Huh. So you have to get the life cycle right. So one of the things that they're working on for the state entomologists, and they're working on this for the life cycle of all the invasive insects in Maine, is they're putting together a life cycle chart to show you when certain when they're in certain points of their life cycle and when it's best to eradicate them and how to eradicate them. Kind of a yeah, really kind of a calendar that shows you. Because if you do certain things at certain times, you think you're getting rid of them, and it's not making much of a difference. But if you hit it right at the right point of the life cycle, you can eradicate them fairly well from the locale. So this this should be important. And of course, Nancy Dale and I are going to work on trying to um, put together things that will be on the website for the town, so it will clear. So we'll our committee's mo uh, mission is really to disseminate information and get good information to people in a timely fashion so they can deal with some of these insects and we can not be overwhelmed by them. Are you going to create a Facebook page for that? No. Okay. <laughs> we can, you could take what I do as a write-up and okay. that we do as a committee and you could, you could put it on the Facebook page. You're more than welcome to do that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And I'll give you links. There'll be links yeah. for the, uh, 
the state uh, forest people. Okay. And I'll, I'll do a write-up and send it to you. And the write-up is on behalf of the subcommittee I'm on. I just haven't taken the time to do it yet. Okay, on behalf of the... Okay. That's neat. I've seen on online people take, I think, buckets of soapy water and they shine a light on it so at night the moths go to... Have you seen that? No, I, I don't. I don't know if it's yeah. effective or not, but yeah. you take a five-gallon bucket and you fill it with soap and water, and you shine a light on it, and the, they're attracted to the light, and then they drown in the water. Someone told me that's but, only effective against the males. Right. Oh, okay. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. Mostly, I mean, when they're flying, like, and they're they're just plastered against walls anywhere that there's a, a, a light shining. I mean, like out back here. Yeah. Or a white right, surface. right on the back wall of the town office, there were a couple of mornings when it was like all over. Oh. But they're all males. So, but I guess that helps because then there's less. Risk. Well, by the time they're they're plastering themselves to the wall, though, they've already oh, they've, they've, they've already done the nasty. Yeah, yeah. like oh. Karen said, it's yeah. about the life cycle, so maybe it's. Yeah. 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 I think that's a good thing. What I what people did when they first were infested by these things, I had three. 60 foot tall oak trees cut down and I had buckets of water as they were cutting down they took the nest and it was soapy water with a little chlorine in it oh. Clorox in it yeah. and it just um, got rid of them all I had a number of pails they just did it shipped up the woods and, and I haven't had any and that was two years ago they and were we, in the caterpillar stage at that point yes huh? and they were in the nests yeah. and it was early spring so they still needed the nest to go back to right. and they were in the nest at the time of day when they came so that uh, they, I haven't seen a uh, brown tail moth caterpillar in two years. Wow. Yeah, we don't wow. have them on our That's property. Awesome. So, but this it's on a peninsula too, so maybe it's just. Hmm. Yeah. Neat. Thank you for sharing, Jaren. Mm -hmm. Okay, the property updates, Rachel. A little bit about George Gould. That that trend's in pretty good shape. There is currently a barberry down there though. I stand corrected from what I said in my last spiel I'd be about that. Surprised if there was mm, there is it's everywhere. quite a bit. There's still very small bushes and I I really don't know what the best way to deal with that. Um, Whether we should just dig them up and or clip them. Yeah, if you can if you can dig up the crown you know, most yep. of the crown that Generally Not gets them one under of those things that can come back from any little piece. Well, of it will a little bit, but okay. you know, it they don't they don't grow super fast. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's not like like the you know wild rosa right. multiflora, which yeah. you know you nip it here and then two weeks later it's yeah. you know, like this again. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Yeah, Mostly yeah, keeping the seeds from keeping it from reseeding. Keeping yeah. From, okay. So we yeah, the, the keeping it, yeah, that anything that you cut so that it doesn't flower and go to seed okay. helps prevent the dispersal, and then it's a matter of getting rid of that particular. Right. Is this bush. a plant that I should be bagging up when I when I attack this? Should I be bagging up all of that plant material? Will it root? No, I don't. I don't usually. I mean, if it's if it's rainy and damp, maybe, but. Generally, what I do is like leave it on top of where where it will dry out. You know, I and I, you know, in my woods, I usually wait until it's dry to go in there. Yep. You know, so, yeah. Um, yeah. It, when it dries out, it, it doesn't, and it dries out pretty quick. Okay, because yeah, we we were hesitant to attack it until I found out those two questions. Yeah. yeah. Um, that's something that I need to see too. I need to get paint. Um, so it's I got this. Yeah. Do I need blue paint? No, that one is marked with orange, so it would be no, better. The if trail, you... the big sign that on the the private property says "Follow the orange trails." But didn't you receive that email that I sent? Yes, I did, and I was confused by that because I was seeing white, blue, I know. and orange markers. In yeah. There. <laughs> the uh, the sign originally put there by the scout was all orange. Was all marked with orange, okay. and then someone went through there in our previous lifetime of this commission I see. and brought, because everything's marked with blue and put blue paint there. Okay. And it was like, 
Well, yeah, well, it's, this trail is an orange mark trail. So. It's an orange. Yeah. Okay. We've the got the that. sign We've says got that. that. Someone said, oh, put blue, blue tape over the word orange in the sign. It's like, yeah, how many times a year are you going to have to replace yeah. that? Let's that just mark it with orange. <laughs> I'm glad you have those, too, because I walked yeah. it all over the weekend, and when you get out to the field, like behind where yeah. the storage kit, I was like, I have no idea. It's hard where the trail to tell how far yeah. along yeah. that meadow you need to go. And people are like, you... am I still on the trail? Is this right. still the trail? So yeah. by getting the um you know the the posts and the the signs and i yep. try to make it an orange arrow it's perfect um, <laughs> you can just put them in the meadow and yeah and make sure the entrance went to the other side is clearly marked from the last sign so that you can, yeah. it's like oh it's just beyond this or yep. yeah yep awesome um the foot on all the roots i noticed old white paint yeah should i grab a can of white paint and i don't think this time of year or, that it's really well, that helpful because uh, it's going to be obvious. Well, the leaves will be down. The leaves will be down and over it. I think maybe next year yeah, yeah, we could rake right it and then is. then yeah. mark the roots that are sticking up. But right now you're going to have leaves all over the trail anyway. Oh, so. know, I didn't really necessarily need it immediately. I just didn't know. Like, I'm making a plan. Yeah. So mark. Good for you. Um, <laughs> for, I am thinking long term. Love that. Other than that, I mean, trash wise, I don't think it's a very heavily trafficked it's trail not, not. because I very rarely find any trash there. Mm -hmm. It's more like it needs a good raking. Yeah. I've moved all of the larger branches, but mm -hmm. there's still a lot of little. Yeah. And some of the bridge, that bridge that Charlie said could be extended. Mm -hmm. Again, you were saying that your husband was apt to take rocks and fill in. If he you just wanted, wanted to, to fix it right If he wanted there. to do it that right now, I think that would be a good okay. idea because it's going to be a while before we're going to be hiking in there with any wood sure. and extending any bridges or anything. Okay. And then that one other bridge where it, that was well done, the tree that was leveled, that was flattened on one side, it was mm -hmm. good, but you know, it might be nice to put like a hiking stick on either side of that trail so somebody could use the hiking stick to get over and then a hiking stick to get back. I mean, who just, did that leveled tree? Yeah, that's very Who did it? I don't know. It's really cool. It's really well yeah. done. Yeah. I think the Eagle Scout and I think the um, Public Works worked with him to make that trail. It's really So nice they helped cut down some trees for him because it was his Eagle Scout project. Wow. And he enlisted their aid and we gave them permission to do so. Mm -hmm. And I think they did the trail and they flattened out. They left the whole trunk of the tree and just flattened the top of it. It's yeah. very well done. My only comment yeah. is I wish the trail was longer. You get you're like, know. whoa, that's it. You get to the end <laughs> You have to go back. Yeah, the way. We couldn't find some other, some way to do another, like a longer well, trail. Well, what, what Max and I have been talking about many times is you could go from there to um, to Elm Street Pocket Park, whatever yeah. we want to call that. Uh -huh. yeah. And um, and then eventually cross Elm Street to the rest area and or oh, go around cool. to the uh, river park or yeah. go around. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you could take that um, and not go on some of those private properties where the brook comes through. Yeah. If you just followed that brook, it'd take you to Jefferson Street. Huh. Mm -hmm. Well, that, that kind of ties into the... Um, yeah, the with University the University of Maine project, right. that, which would start a trail here by the Fireman's Memorial Wall and go under the culvert to mm -hmm. the confluence of those brooks. Right. Mm. And that could be part of what is next to the, yeah. uh, the George Gold Trail. I was wondering if we could extend that trail up to, I live up on Main Street near, like up on the Moody's end. I live right across the street from the people with all the ducks. That are in the road. Almost by oh. the historical society, like very, very close across, to the yeah. historical society. Yeah. There is this vacant field or lot right across the street from our place, and we were wondering if it would be possible to blaze a trail from right across the street from our house and somehow get into mm -hmm. the George Gold Trail. You know, the sort of thing. Yeah, if you look at a Google Map, it does connect. Well, Max is looking <laughs> looking it up here for us. Oh. Yeah. Uh, cause, you know, we were thinking it would, might be really cool because we could blaze cross-country ski trails. Yeah. You know, and do some, different... Yeah, some of that is good for cross-country, but not as much. Quarry Hill is great for snowshoeing or cross-country. Yeah, yeah. But I, I just don't know... But that would connect. That would, I'd have to see a property maps, mm -hmm. you know, and find out who... Yeah, I don't know... Which I love that piece of property. I used to, when it was for sale, I dream, I dreamt about it being a community garden. I did, like, It would be so perfect. Because <laughs> yeah, it's right in the downtown area, too, which is kind of neat, and near the Historic Society. Mm -hmm. 
And then there's that other little vacant lot that was for sale um, on Hill Street. That quarter and acre? Like yeah, a quarter acre? Yeah, quarter acre. And I, <laughs> if I'm, you know, if I'm locating myself correctly, they seem sort of, you know, straight line. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if we could somehow get a trail through there and just go through that little curve straight without the water in between. Well, it might be. Yeah, we'll You'll see in a few there. minutes as soon as yeah. Max picks it up. Minutes? <laughs> but, um, in eight minutes. Wow. Max, you're pretty cool. Oh my gosh. Look, Look at that. that. Oh, cool. Ah. And where are we looking? Well, behind Philbrook Field, over to, um, mm -hmm. how about the Historic Society? Well, there's Philbrook Field, because this is the boat. Yeah. The Historic Society, to see if there's I'm a connection. I'm going to do that. <laughs> yeah, if there's a connection between Philbrook Field and the Historic Society, you'd be able to see kind of. Mm -hmm. Well, yeah, you can kind of see it that way. It's yeah. more. So, so you sort of need. So let's see, I think. So this is the historical society over here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So you can see Philbrook Field. Is yeah, that so parcel? Field. Yeah. So there are two parcels that we'd be going across. Yeah. And they already have the trail on them. I was about to say. They already have the trail on them. You really want to. Um, for the historical society, I think the issue is that they have. Uh, the cows, the animal cows. Yeah, the cattle. The cattle. That one. Yeah, it's like all those stone walls and yeah. everything. Yeah, the cattle yeah. pound. Mm -hmm. Waterboro Hedge. Okay. <laughs> and where would parking be? Like, would the historical society allow parking to park well, there and walk in, or? It really wouldn't be too close to the historical society. Can I get up and move? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm gonna that's just that's point to I mean, it. Yeah. Because it's actually the I mean, uh, parents always did warn me about you know, not being so close to things. You know. <laughs> <laughs> so this is my lot here, mm -hmm. and what I'm looking at is this here and this here. Is there any way we could go across there? Is it straight into the town from this way? Uh, this lot we would have to probably see the historic facility. It's not a landlocked one. It is the only kind of access to a right of way in the town, Silver Falford area, mm -hmm. that kind of site. So that's something to look at. Um, that's a perfect place wet. for. Yes. Um, is it okay? Because I had to look at this a while ago, anyway, for the tennis courts, but now it's a whole thing of it all oh, yeah. the wetlands. Uh, <laughs> there are wetlands that are pretty much this half of the whole area, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which is fine if we're doing passive stuff, just walking through. It's not like it's uh, yeah, because the trail goes over wet areas course. now. Yeah. We just yeah. put like yeah, lawn bridges. There's a little stream and all that stuff, but it's not, it's not that bad. Mm -hmm. So that's fine if we're doing that. So just we wouldn't have any parking there. It would still be park of folks over here. Oh yeah. But you could extend it. You might be able to do something with the trail where it goes. Wow, I have seen uh, sign at Camden Hills too. They'll put a sign at a trailhead that's like that. That's like, please park at the Camden Snow Bowl mm -hmm. and use this access point. Um, so, so we could always do that. Yeah, it would essentially be this person who I think is the uh, one you were just talking about, who has like all the yeah. animals there. We'd have to see if they comply with because um, this is actually. Okay, I think I should agree. This is actually the right idea. So. They're fine with an entrance that goes right there, then that would still be fine. Um, yeah. Do you know them at all, Rachel? I love her. White they they yeah, might not want. He comes over and visits a lot. I like they might not want a bunch of people wandering on their property if they ran for it. Sure. The, the man is more talkative, more friendly than his wife. She, she seems a little bit more aggressive. But they're, they seem good people. You know, I'm when the time comes, I'm, yeah. I'm talking. And if, if nothing else, um, again, the landlocked property, what is it good for? It would be great for trails. Yeah. That's so it might be one thinking. way of extending the trail to just have yeah. a further loop to it, a further section of it. And I could access the trail from right across the street from my house. Yeah. Yeah. No ulterior motive. No ulterior no, motive at all here. <laughs> um, so why don't we make this a winter 2022 goal, like somewhere in January, February, start trying to figure some of this planning out so that way we can good. if we get the access and that all works we can hit the ground running with some trail work in the summer yeah so we can even look at taking it along the brook to to join jefferson street and 
something that could happen there yeah, with permission from us later when the trails right in town. Okay. Um, Dutch Neck, Karen. I have no update of Dutch Neck. You've been there more recently than I have. So uh, the trail was fully marked and uh, you were able to find your way. Yep, the trails were marked well. We took a 13 gallon trash bag out of trash wow. and it still probably could have used a little bit more, but yeah. well, we did quite Such a bit. a shame. Yeah. And again, um, I'd love to see us kind of open it up to the public next year, sort of have a little ribbon cutting thing. And I'd love for people to know that there's other trails, the spurs that go off to the water on the other side, a couple of them, they go yeah. out to the point. There's a place where there's the, the rope swing. Yeah. And, we, you know, so there's some really neat places that aren't just that trail. Yeah, I think that's part of getting the kiosk up, too, because we could, I could do a map mm -hmm. easily enough for our kiosk where you could see all of that. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Been to the Dutch Network. How close is that to the Peter's Pond Trail? It's a little ways. It's like maybe less than two miles down the yeah. road. Okay. That's, two miles on the other side of the road. I don't know who takes care of the ones at Peter's, but Mid Coast Conservancy. Coast. And they bring you right out to Dutch Neck, and you know, we got. Yeah, they just rebuilt bridges. I mean, Charlie and the group there. Um, it's it's a great trail crew, and that's why I love to have them help us yeah. in the future. Rachel? Yes. This is Dutch Neck Marine Park at like the end of Dutch Neck Road. Okay. Okay. Yeah, it's way down there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. The and Peter's all, Pond is all way the way over there. here. So it's a bit of a hike. You really wouldn't. Okay. I'd love no, more trails down there. Too. Dutch Neck Marine Park. There's 20 acres, isn't there? For trailers and boats. And, but, I mean, that's where all the clamors yeah, go. 2023. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Will's not here, so we don't have a Quarry Hill. Um, I think we've all kind of got a pulse on what's going on at Elm Street, and Steve wants to talk a bit about that. So, Steve, you're you're. Uh... Yeah. Um, th actually, it's too bad Will isn't here, but maybe he's listening. Um, uh, just a couple of quick ideas. Uh, well, one thing is that the uh, Public Works did dump a couple of small loads of of topsoil or whatever there, but it's probably not enough to really make a whole screen, so unless they've got some more that they can dump there, we're going to have to go back to moves for a little bit, the garden club will for a little more time so you know, bag and stuff. Um, but we definitely have the forsythia, and now that the weather is getting a little drier, Carol and I are probably going to move that up on our schedule to try to get those in for some good fall yet. Um, and uh, the other question um, for the kind of will related is that when the initial work was going on, uh, we talked to Greg, the arborist, uh, about uh, pruning and reshaping the apple tree that's on the Elm Street edge over there. There's one sucker that has turned into an actual branch that's leaning into the branches, into the trees that are over the water. Um, and then it's kind of, you know, out of shape, got a lot of suckers. And we were asking him about pruning that, and he said, yes, but it should wait until, you know, late fall. So I just wondered if that was actually on the DPW schedule for this year. Um, I mean, it's nothing, nothing that I'd be doing, but, you know, it'd be nice to know that it's happening. Um, uh, one other suggestion that I had, and this actually relates to snow plowing, is that the slab there is set right into the ground and kind of the gravel area comes right up to the edge of it. And, you know, in terms of concern about plow damage, I can see, you know, if there's snow, a guy would plow not knowing quite where that is and, you know, hooking that slab with the edge of the plow. So I was going to suggest a couple of boulders at that end of the slab to kind of serve as a you know as a as a marker as a warning kind of to define that that end nothing that would obstruct anybody's view but just to let will the that i know where it is yeah would that take away from so you can fit about two cars there right now would that take away from no no, no not that big not that big. okay yeah but, and if it's in front of where the picnic 
take is that kind of makes the cars stop there too. Yeah, right, exactly. So people don't drive into the. How much does a boulder cost? Well, I don't look, think we buy them. No, <laughs> look at the. I think we the, find them. Did you see the giant granite slabs that they put on the edge of that park area? I mean. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, just e easily I mean, half that size would work. Right, right, but that the well, granite yeah, ones I mean, cost money, the right? Didn't they? At the town landing, something about half the size of those, right. taller than the slabs, right? So that they're a little more visible. Okay, right. So they go up, but yeah. I imagine John will find one. I'm sure. sure he can. <laughs> I'm, I, okay. if, if there's rocks or no that shortage, we, we, <laughs> we think about building, you know, like like benches or something like that. Always think boulders, because we have them. <laughs> and, and if you work them right, they work just as well as, as anything else. And, okay. you know, it would help John to get rid of some of those, probably. And you can yeah. sit on them. Okay. Uh, and you can sit on them, right? We can email a list to Will of things to check in on. Yeah, yeah I, 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 to -do list. Do, I plan on talking to him tonight. Yeah, yeah, no. okay. Um, let's see, the, other, the only other thing about uh, Elm Street was, um, I was, I was thinking I just want to, again, idea, not married to it, but I can get like a bag of a hundred big daffodil bulbs from Ooh, cheapers. Nice. And I was thinking on the side, again, on the Elm Street side, kind of halfway to the, the remaining trees there. Just to have something nice oh, there for spring to attract attention. If you've got the forsythias on one side, the daffodils on the other, that'd be lovely. Yeah, kind of, I think it would be kind of nice. And the bulbs are cheap. It's like eighty-five bucks for a bag, a hundred. So I don't know. It, and that is that um, garden club or? Yeah, it would be garden club. It wouldn't be us. Okay. I just kind of wanted to run the idea by. I can run it if it's okay with you guys. I'll run it by the rest of the garden club and. See what we can do. Throw a few tulips in. Well, I don't know. I, they're, I think they're deer over there. Yes, yeah, some there are. Yeah, more yeah. edible. Yeah. Uh, you know, uh, uh, true. And this is the deer protected. Deer ate the tulips that, that I put in over at the rest area. So. Okay. Well, at my then, house, the chip will then the animal life look out and help the deer look out. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Okay. Elm, Elm Street White Air White Tail Preserve. <laughs> they wouldn't last long there. No, <laughs> I don't think with the neighbors. No, <laughs> uh, no. So you're right. The neighbors would love it. Yeah. Oh, I'm sure they would. <laughs> Sitting on your back porch. Oh, yeah. Look, Martha, I can just open the window. <laughs> How yeah. about the uh, Madamic River rest area and the Pine Street Landing? Okay, Madamic River. Oh, I've got my. Um, I filled out my form. Excellent. Um, okay, the rest area, we, we just, Carol and I just finished a, a new custom bed that was um, to fulfill a request from the guys who mow at, at the rest area of uh, daylilies and some tall perennial geraniums around where the wires come down from the telephone poles. Mm -hmm. They don't have to do this anymore. Um, so we, it's, it's all planted. I just need to use some of the mulch from out front to mulch it out. And then there's still some wood chips over there and some wood chips in the pile here. And, you know, maybe connect that to the, the current bed area by the forsythia so that the, whoever's mowing doesn't even have to get through there. I'm trying not to make it a maze <laughs> or an amusement park for whoever's driving the mower. Um, every this get, relates back to the litter thing. Every time we're over there, which is, you know, sometimes it'll be three times in one week and other times it'll be just like once a week, yeah. um, depending on what we're working. But every time we're over there, you know, it's just kind of a matter of routine now. We pick up litter wherever we can see it, around the picnic tables, by the little fishing spot, along the fence line. Um, and we probably get, we probably get a Hannaford plastic grocery bag every time we do that, so. So you think that's like three to four times a month you're getting? Yeah, probably. At least, at least twice. Is there a garbage can there? No. No, there's not a garbage can. If you can. put there's one there, then people are trying to aim for it from their car. 
Well, 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 not only that, but I also think people bring trash that oh, yeah. shouldn't be there. Yeah. 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 The cigarette receptacle, Will's been checking that, um, and it keeps getting, there's garbage jammed into that. Yeah, oh, I, you're I noticed that. No. So I pulled, somebody no. stuffed a couple of napkins in there. I'm thinking, well, that's a fire hazard. Yeah, yeah that'll be exciting. I got yeah. things <laughs> out of my truck and pulled that out. I just, oh, that's a shame. People can be really stupid sometimes. Anyway, um, but yeah, there's it's all the same stuff every time. It's you know napkins and plastic cups and food containers and wrappers from either Hannaford or Dunkin' Donuts. Um, it's cans of whatnot. The little what is that? McGillicuddy is the little the nips, like the fireball like, and the McGillicuddy. You know, I see a lot of those. Whatever <laughs> what stuff is, I drink that. Um, and um, and still a lot of package, empty packages of Talmel Blue One. Oh yeah, I know. I was I talked to Will about moving the receptacle because it's in that one spot, and whoever does it backs up. And it's to that left by the bush. I cleaned it all up over the weekend again. I mean, and then if they don't get the hint there, I thought I was like, maybe we'll put a sign like to the Paul Mall person, a <laughs> aim please. Or like, right? <laughs> we've got the receptacle there for them and they're still not using it. They almost, it's like they almost empty their vehicle yeah. or yeah, they true. just, it's its like one to two packages of Paul Mall butts. You will get a prize if you... <laughs> get it no, into I, the I, it's the don't tell them the prize. Well, and I found all the palm oil wrappers on the other side in the right, bushes. Yeah. So. Yeah, exactly. the conservation commission. Um, <laughs> okay, so anyway, going down the uh, the uh, Frail Park report form, which is a really good idea because mm -hmm. it makes me think. Oh yeah, I should remember to say something about that. There's still one snag in the river from a tree that fell down. It's on. It's kind of. Um, the riverside of where the forsythia bed is. Uh, it's been there since spring. I've been meaning to try to cut it up so that I could drag it out, but just haven't gotten it. I, I don't know. I mean, it's it's a tree, you know, and rivers get tree snags yeah. falling in all, all the time. And I don't know whether it's something that actually needs to be cleared out or not, but I just, you know, from a naturalism point of view. Right. Joan, uh, Joan Ray mentioned to me once that sometimes it's good to let trees be where they are for the decomposition process mm -hmm. yeah. and the beneficial uh, bacteria yeah. and everything that comes from it. So maybe it's worth taking a peek and then determining. But right. It might just be that it needs to break down. Yeah, but I just, it's kind of like the suds. I saw those and I thought I'd mention it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, invasive species observed. Yes, there's a little bit for now, a little bit of Rosa multiflora that I cut back a few times, but there's uh, on the side that faces Route 1, where the poison, near where the poison ivy was, yeah. was past tense, it's gone now. Looks so good. Um, there's a, a kind of right between where the poison ivy was and that little parking spot at the fishing uh, spot. Uh, there's a big quince there, and it's halfway invaded or merging with a huge barberry, which mm. I kind of whacked at a little bit in the spring, but I've never been able to get back to. So um, so there's your invasive species. Uh, are picnic tables in good shape? The tables themselves, yes. But you know, for the record, the two by 12 or whatever it is, the frames around the gravel bases, they're in need of repair or replacement. They're kind of you know, falling apart at the corners and rotting. So. I pried some gum out of one of them over the weekend. <laughs> out of the picnic table. I don't know why. Why? <laughs> yeah, well. Um, <laughs> and then, does this recite, site require a special cleanup effort? We've already covered that. Yeah, so. Um, when I sent the email, I was just thinking, it's such an easy spot, such a central spot, the rest area, and it takes 10 minutes, you know, I've been, I've been popping down there after work, so I was just thinking, if we all put an extra eye on it and had a garbage bag, and was just through, and my cousin and her son have been fishing there, and they've been trying to pick up, that maybe we can help minimize the, the litter 
or just keep up with yeah, it. Yeah, if everybody okay. that's involved with this kind of stuff. Yeah. Stops Maybe there. you could start putting out like little things because I know people do actually read the Facebook page and then we could post it too okay. of just, hey, why don't this week we're focusing on cleaning up this spot or next week we're going to focus like every week give everybody a weekly focus your efforts here yeah that's a folks. good idea okay yeah, do you all like that all yeah, i do i like that, I love that. Yeah, okay. just because it would be something fun that people Please could do focus. take a picture of the spot yeah okay Before and give kudos and say sign up and not even sign up but just you know hey if you have time please help us yeah the quarry would be on that every week, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. that's the quarry. Over the summer, I picked up the trash yeah. there multiple times a week. Yeah. Um, okay, so the other thing is the Pine Street Public Landing. Um, yeah, I don't. I'm there. You know, I swing through there at least from coming from home. I mean, it's it's tempting. I I, I have a difficult time. I think my truck steers to the right. When I'm coming from home, and it automatically goes down to the to the landing to take a tour of the thing, and I I'm always scoping out for litter, and I don't find there nearly as much there as I do at the the rest area. Uh, when I do, I pull over, stop, and pick it up and put it in the truck. Um, I haven't seen any trees down there um, or branches. Yes, there's quite a bit of. Uh, the multiflora wild rose. Um, one major bush that's right on the border with the Cabot property next door. And then there's the adjacent to the section that John cleared out a couple, three years ago behind the kiosk. Mm -hmm. There's some more that goes up along the riverbank to the property line, um, which love to see that cleared too, but there's a bunch of it in there too. So that's something to look at. Um, yeah, as far as I know, the picnic table's in great shape down there. Yeah, they look good. Um, like I said, trash, some, not a lot. Um, and same thing, paper, bottles, cans. Cigarette butts. Cigarette butts, plastic cups, paper cups. Um, there again, though, I, don't, I, I never get down to the riverbank you know, along from the the landing itself up towards the bridge. And I, I wonder like how there. much crap I do is think, there. though, they do. I do think when the shellfish committee does their cleanups, I know people go there. In the spring? Yeah. 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 And okay. yeah. Well, it's good that it's getting done at least once a year. There's Plus, the elvers will be there in the spring, and I know they're, 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 they're pretty, pretty good about it. Yeah. That's good to know. Yeah, I never see that, you know, I'm in and out of there all the time when they're down there. And where they park there and, and they're hanging out there, I never see any trash. Right. No. You know, so they're they're not leaving. Because most of them are clamors and they don't want it in their river. Right. Yeah. <laughs> right. Yeah. We, were, we were down there, me and my mother were cleaning up over this past weekend. Their tide was low, so we were at the boat launch. And it was, there was a lot of litter there this past weekend. Um, And two cl clamors were getting ready to go out and they were like, watching us, watching us. And my mom was like, hello. And they're like, we were just trying to figure out who it was that was doing some cleanup, and they're like, "That's so nice." And I was like, "Well, the Rural Conservation Commission." <laughs> All right. And then we talked cool. about they were like, "We do the shellfish one," and it was great to talk with them a little bit about the efforts. And they said, right. they said they found a big shift that a lot of the clamors are trying to do a, a better part and keeping things cleaned up. So that was great. Excellent. Excellent. Yeah. That's, that's to hear. That's great to hear. Um, nice memorial benches down there. Uh, yeah, I saw beautiful. That. Yeah. Uh, oh, and kind of while we're on that subject, before I finish with the landing, uh, Larry Wellman Jr., who former member of the Conservation Commission, actually has been doing some cleaning around the, the guardrail at the end of Pine Street where it intersects with West Main. To the and, bridge, kind of near the yeah, bridge. kind of near the bridge. That's been a lot of weed trees and stuff so that you know, when you're pulling out of Pine Street, you kind of have to be almost on West Main to be able to see around and cut all that stuff down. Yeah, so, bushes. Great job. So people are starting to jump in and do some maintenance, which is nice. Um, <clears throat> oh, and the only other thing, comments, suggestions on um, the Pine Street landing is 
at some point we need to develop a plan to more effectively deter the weeds that are coming up through the riprap. I've got some ideas, but there's not really much point in going into detail right now. It's something I'll just kick around over the winter. Um, so the town, uh, the, the flower pots are probably going to stay there for at least another week or so. Um, but there are two mums down there bracketing the kiosk, two of the big, huge moose crossing mums. Um, and once those are, are gone, once I've gotten them out for the season, then Carol and I are going to go back to doing what we're doing with, you know, clearing a, a couple of feet from the pavement between the boulders and, I mean, really, really clearing it from, of weeds and then putting down newspaper and wood chips. Um, and I also have some uh, 8 by 16 by 4 inch thick cinder blocks that we can make uh, level platforms out of for the pots for the spring so that we can kind of nestle in there, you know, like an inch or so below the, the pavement so that they aren't going to get clocked by the snow plow. Um, what else? I think that's pretty much, pretty much all I had on my notes. Um, we talked about the Austin news about the town forest. So basically, for um, I had it all cut back so the branches wouldn't brush on people. And then that rain and thunderstorm weekend, I walked it the other weekend. And I'm like, how did <laughs> it's a mess all over again? And I've got it. So I've got to spend some time doing that. I talked to my husband. He agreed he'll chainsaw down the chainsaw the tree out of the path that finally there was a large tree at the entrance that was hung up. It's finally fallen. So um, we'll do that. He has it's two weeks away. So before the end of October, we'll get that out of the way. But you can step right over it, so it's not a it's not um, blocking point. Um, it's really muddy. So Max has been talking about applying for a, a grant for it, um, the Stephen King one, right, Max? And that would help um, with funds for the invasive species, but hopefully, potentially, um, other trail work, because there are more wet, wet mm -hmm. wetland areas that Very really wet. need um, some packed, some bridges or rocks or something. Mm -hmm. I mean, my shoes got so muddy the other day, and it's, it's also damaging to the trail. So, mm -hmm. um, it need it needs some a decent amount of trail work to be properly passable. Mm -hmm. um, I did update all the trail markings. It did. I tried to make the turns much more visible, much more clear, because people get confused about all the trails that go off. Mm -hmm. But it's private property owners that right. are using them, so I can't. And that back end is mostly on private property, so we can't block them. I did try once with a stick, and it got moved, so I don't yeah. want to block. Um, and other than all the good news from the state, that's that's what I'm doing down there. There's, Litter in the parking lot, but not actually not much, surprisingly. Um, and there's rarely, if ever, sometimes a couple beer cans or something out on the trail, but nothing nothing noticeable this past month. Um, do you want to talk a little bit about the grant at all? I mean, potential it's potential right now. So yeah, um, the Stevens have King Foundation have a very broad grant program. Uh, they get. Grant as small as five hundred, as big as fifty thousand. It depends on how uh, how many applicants we usually get. And uh, the town actually got this fund funding about two years ago for the self-contained breathing apparatus devices for the fire department. So now it's been two years. We're open up to doing another grant. And figured this this would be a nice small project that we could get the funding for. If, Necessary unless there's a different project going on that I should be using it for. Um, but uh, I mean, Leslie told me it's going to be five thousand for this invasive species work based on what you were told. So that would be fine, and then add in some small improvements. This would be a, a simple little ten thousand dollar rock grant to provide for that. Um. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping, I guess, based on like the $50 tree injections. But now we've got the beetles from the state, which I wasn't accounting for. So I think the Leighton Little Nice $10,000 project works with 
Mm -hmm. It'd be great. Yeah. Yeah. With the forest could definitely, we, then we could get the wood to do the walkways and yeah. it could use it. And and maybe we can use that to make another trail through that stays on our property. Right. Yeah. Well, well, the majority of the fund, most of the funding would have to go to like the top priority of the invasion. Okay. Oh, whatever that they're called at this point. And then, uh, Wooly allergies. Wooly. Uh, Wooly. Wooly bullies. That's it. Wooly, Wooly bullies. Wooly bullies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're bullying the hell like, off. If it ends up being a $9,000 project, you know, that's what most of the money goes for. And then the 1000 goes to maybe a very nice kiosk or something. Yeah. Yeah, I yeah that would be great. Cool. Cool. And just to the side, when I was at the Bremen um, Library and we were listening to the invasive species talk about brown tail moth, I... I brought up the um, the town forest in, in our discussions. I mentioned that we had a you know hemlock grove, an ancient hemlock grove, the town forest, and a number of the ladies go, oh where, oh where is this? And of course, I had my handy brochures, my little flyers that we had made. I rushed out to my car and grabbed my flyers. I left a whole bunch of the flyers at the uh, library in Bremen, and they seemed interested in knowing. It. They said, I didn't realize Waldemar well, had any recreation areas. Oh, uh, well, thank you for, for the, the, <laughs> my heart. Yeah. <laughs> so it was good to pass the news along. Yeah, that's great. <laughs> um, any other questions about the town forest? Okay. So that pretty much wraps it up. Next meeting, we'll continue with our steward project of being responsible. Will's going to take on the Elm Street area and Quarry Hill, so he'll have the two. I know that one with, has and been I'll added. Get with Will on those okay. okay. Um, next meeting, November second at five thirty. I have one. I just wanted to add this, um, and it, it may not be vital. Um, I've been I drove by Elm Street a number of different times when I was out doing different things, and there were about four days not in a row, but four different days, the same car was parked there. The Lexus. Yeah. Yeah, I and noticed it as well. Lexus, I, yeah, I didn't notice, or... I didn't know if they were staying there overnight. It was a neighbor for using that as a parking lot. I don't know if we have to put a sign, no overnight parking or, you know, I yeah, just, I, I, I just was, I, I think they're using it as a parking lot and that's not the purpose. Yeah. Yeah, the first and time I saw little, it, I was really excited. I was like, wow, yeah. somebody's using Yeah, I, I, I saw somebody walking, and I saw the car there. I said, oh, isn't this nice? People are using it. Yeah. It's lovely. Yeah. And then the next time I drove by the Where same Where do you car, think the they're coming time, from? I, I doubt they're coming We think from it's Elm a neighbor. Street. We think it's... Well, I don't think there's a neighbor on Elm Street. Driving in a Lexus no, 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 SUV. Street. Jefferson, Jefferson Street. Street. Yeah, Jefferson Street. Oh, I, you think it's... I think it's maybe Jefferson Street. Yeah. We can... I, 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 we know a neighbor. We can ask them whose it is. And ask them not to park, not to use it as a parking lot. Well, we'll find out who it is. Yeah, I'm sure. I got concerned because I brought my camera for tonight. Hours. As I drove by, I was going to take a picture, get their license plate. Yeah. Um, but they weren't there. If I see it again, I will. I messaged Will because I was worried. I'm like, what if somebody was fishing and or there was an accident? I got concerned something had happened. Yeah. Um, and then I went back that evening and it was gone. So I have, um, but I'll keep an eye out too if we can. Yeah. yeah but, it was like four different days. Yeah. Uh, Julie, just a quick question. Is November 2nd election day or is November 9th election day? November 2nd. Oh, oh okay. Ah. I don't know 2nd. why. It, it, is it is election 2nd. day, it's November 2nd. Oh. It is November 2nd. Yeah, but it won't matter if it's in here. All right, I just want to make sure. <laughs> Everyone's good then? Yeah. Okay. I may not make it to the next meeting. Again, I'm traveling. Okay. Traveling, traveling. So, meeting adjourned. All right.